Thank goodness the window is closed for now. <laughs> until January. Until next week we start talking about January. Uh, we can talk about the summer in its mm. entirety now, Shaka. And I want, if you'd be so kind, as to pick your top five transfers of the entire window across Europe. Yeah, even as you look at this list of ten, they're all very impressive signings. Um, but some more so than others. In a number five for me, I think Barcelona's signing of Frankie de Jong um, is one that will pay huge dividends, particularly down the road. Young, talented, a true box-to-box -box midfielder, which I think Barcelona haven't quite had over recent years. Despite their stuttering start to the season, um, I think Frankie de Jong has, has already shown that he's won for the long term for, for, for Barca. 70, uh, 75 million euros mm. for a 22-year-old should be value for money as well over the course of that contract. Yes. Uh, where else are you going? Yeah, in, in at number four, and again, despite their stutterings, it's been Antoine Griezmann. Listen, I know Barcelona are still waiting on the return of Lionel Messi, but you saw Griezmann at his best with Messi and Suarez uh, in the stand just a couple of weeks ago, where I, I thought he showed that he has the leadership qualities when either of those two uh, are absent. I think once all three are fit, um, this will be a, a Barcelona team, particularly going forward, that not many will look forward to, to playing, playing against. But Antoine Griezmann has shown his, has shown his worth to this team, whether they're shorthanded or not, as okay. the case will be. All right, top three illustrious heights now. Yeah, and as we hit those heights, I'm going to go for a goalkeeper. Of course you are. And why not? Listen, I've, I've said time and time again how highly I, I, I rate Keylor Navas. I think how good he has been for Real Madrid has been almost in contrast to Courtois and how he stumbled since, since arriving at, at the Bernabeu. Now, I know it's a tough call to, to, to make given that Navas has not seen a whole lot of action over the last 12 months, but especially given PSG's own feelings in terms of the goalkeeper department, whether it was Sugu or Ariola, um, Buffon, who was a, a strange sign, signing for me, I think finally they have a world-class goalkeeper. That matches so many of the departments of, of, of their game. Now, whether that will translate to Champions League success, I think there are a whole other set of question marks around PSG as far as that goes. But this, without question, is a significant step in the right direction in getting, in my opinion, one of the best goalkeepers in, in world football. And I think, without question, one of the most underrated goalkeepers world football has seen for the last few years. Yes, they've had a lot of turnover, and they would say strengthening of the ranks in other positions from back to front. Yeah. And that is a safe pair of hands, literally, right? OK, top two. Uh, another player we've seen nothing of so far. Again, this is one for the long term. Eden Hazard, without question, one of the best players in world football. And that was reflected in his price tag. Picked up an injury just before the start of the season. So we haven't been able to see him. The headlines for Real Madrid have been more about Gareth Bale than I think many people expected. Eden Hazard coming into that squad makes it a whole lot better. Um, I still think one of the best signings, again, despite not seeing minutes on the pitch so far, for, for Zinedine Zidane. OK, they got him a, a hundred million, which is uh, supposedly a cut price because of his contract situation. Uh, and that just speaks to exactly how good he is. Listen, we, we saw Eden Hazard at Chelsea. We saw what he could do individually. I think you put him into a team like Real Madrid where there's even more balance to it. It gives him more room, makes him all the more effective. OK. Who's your number one? Number one, Joao Felix. And I'll be honest, when Atletico Madrid made the signing, I didn't think I'd be seeing that. I thought they'd overpaid. Listen, paying a, a, a premium for potential is always a risky game. And as much as, as, as well as, as Atleti have started this season, maybe haven't scored the, the goals in buckets that, that they were expecting, but what we saw from Joao Felix, particularly in the preseason, in linking up with Diego Costa, um, says that he somehow is playing well beyond his, his own experience should suggest. He's coming to a team that is ordinarily so defensive, yet made them exciting. A player who's hard to play alongside in Diego Costa, yet somehow found his own space, bringing the best out of, of Diego Costa as well. This can prove a, an incredible signing, not just in the short term for Atletico Madrid, but for the long term. And again, 
proving me wrong in my own early season predictions to how Zhao Felix would, would settle in. Yes, totally. He was the most expensive of all of those signs. Mm. Even more expensive than Antoine Griezmann, of course, a player he's replaced. The two big questions will be, will he last the season at that level? And once they figure him out, is he going to keep himself above the opposition? I'm voting yes and yes, because I, I think he deserves nothing. I would like to see nothing less just as a, as a neutral fan. OK, we hope for more from Joao Felix and from all of the big money signings across Europe. We hope you enjoyed the transfer window. Keep it here at ESPN FC as the season goes on. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.